The following is a presentation of Fox Sports. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is presented by Bell Tire. After missing two games for the birth of his brand new daughter, Isabella, Miguel Cabrera is back in the Tigers' starting lineup with his 40 RBIs and 598 slugging percentage. And tonight, Cabrera and the rest of the Tigers will take on the Athletics. It's a gorgeous night for baseball here in the Motor City. We welcome you to Comerica Park, game one in this series, featuring the Oakland A's and your Detroit Tigers. Hi again, everyone. Welcome to Tigers Baseball. Mario and Pemba, Ron Allen, glad to have you with us. Good to be back home after an off day. The Tigers are back at it here against the Athletics. And good news, they have Carlos Guillen back in the lineup. He was activated today, Rod. And what exactly will he mean to this lineup now? Well, he's playing a new position. That much we do know. Danny Worth, who had been playing second base, has been sent back down to the minors. So Carlos Guillen, who lobbied for that second base position when it became very apparent that Polanco wasn't coming back, has finally gotten his wish. But we do know from an offensive standpoint, point what he brings to the dance every single night in five previous years as a tiger he's hit 300 he's made three all-star teams he hits from both sides of the dish and he's provided some tremendous protection in that batting order when he is going good but the problem with carlos the last couple of years he has not been healthy therefore we haven't seen the real good carlos again but most definitely when he's hot this boy can hit. All right, we do know this. The top of the Tigers starting lineup this year has been fabulous. Jackson leading off, Damon behind him. Then you got the two guys in the middle in Ordonez and Cabrera. The question is, where do you put Carlos Guillen? And Jim Leland has answered that question. Well, he's got a bat six now with Brennan Bosch doing what he has done in that number five slot. Now Carlos can slot in behind him and provide some protection for big Brennan Bosch. And it also helps out the latter third of that batting order with Guillen batting in that number six spot. So Jim did exactly what he needed to do. All right, that's the story from Comerica Park here. Right now, we send it back to the Call Sam Studios with more on our coverage tonight. Here's Ryan Field. town to start a four-game series and we remind you 
Then if Detroit combines for three or more home runs in this game, bring a copy of the box score to a participating Arby's location tomorrow and get a free small order of curly fries. You can find a copy of the box score in your newspaper or at the Tigers page on Fox Sports Detroit. Dot com. Bob Guerin has led his team here in the Comerica Park at 25 and 25. We'll check out his starting lineup. It is presented tonight by Honda Bloomfield and it features Rajay Davis leading off in center field. Leads the major leagues with 18 steals. Derek Barton will play first base. Kurt Suzuki is the DH tonight. Kevin Kuzminoff will clean up and play third base. Followed by Adam Rosales, Jake Fox, Mark Ellis, Gabe Gross, and Landon Powell will bat nine through the catching and round out their lineup tonight. Here's the scouting report on Dontrell Willis. It is brought to you by Ace Hardware. Well, very important for Dontrell to keep the train on the tracks. Uh, Dontrell's last start against the Dodgers retired 11 of the first 12 hitters that he faced, but then ran into a little difficulty after giving up a base hit with two outs. He kind of unraveled after that, so he needs a little bit more concentration, especially with runners on base when he's pitching in traffic. He's yielding a 343 batting average in those situations, and I don't care how well he pitches. If he doesn't get more than 1.66 runs per game, it's going to be tough to win. Let's take a look at the Beaumont Hospital's defense behind Dontrell Boss, Jackson Ordonia is in the outfield. Inge, Everett Guillen, first start at second base since 1999, is anchored there. The big fella is back in the lineup after missing a couple of days, and Avila is behind the dish tonight. Well, after some cool weather on the West Coast, happy to report 82 degrees. Our game time temperature, the first pitch of the ball game from Willis is outside to Rajay Davis. It'll be Davis, Spartan, and Suzuki here in the Oakland first inning. Tigers have won six of eight from Oakland in this ballpark, six of the last eight. And the count goes to 2-0 and oh on Davis. Last time we saw Davis, he was batting ninth for Bob Garrett. But after a couple of really good games, Davis is now back in his familiar leadoff spot where he does most of his damage. Rajay batting 252 with one home run. He has knocked in 15, and as we mentioned, leading the league in steals with 18. Dontrell missing outside again, 3 and 1 on Davis. You don't want to walk him. He will run. In fact, Davis had three steals on Wednesday in the game at Baltimore. That is rifle down the left field line. Fair ball. It's going to go to the corner. Extra bases. Stumbling around the bag is Davis, but he'll get to second with no problem. And that is a leadoff two-base hit for Rajay Davis. It is always tough when you put legitimate base stealers on the base pass in the very first inning because you become preoccupied with what they're doing instead of what you should be doing. And Davis just goes down and gets a really nice pitch from Don Trail and uh, finds himself on second base. Derek Barton will step in. Barton batting 278. He is five for his last 11. He is very good at dropping down the bunt. In fact, has seven sacrifices this year. And there he goes. He lays one down back to the mound. Willis will barehand it for the play. It's been a long, long time since I've uh, seen or even heard of a first baseman with that many sacrifice bunts. So you got eight now. Usually those guys are doing a little bit of traffic and, and moving the baseball all around the diamond. So Davis moves to third, and Willis now will face Kurt Suzuki. And Dontrell Willis is going to get the advantage here in the very first inning of the infield playing in. And Jim Leland is not going to give the athletics anything here. Suzuki, I guess, is getting a night off. He is DHing tonight. This is a guy that literally runs out there every night behind the plate. He's been very, very durable. Although he landed on the disabled list earlier this year for the first time in his career. And Bob Guerin uh, said before the game today that this is like a day off for him because he can't get him out from behind the plate. Since he came off the disabled list right before we were out west, he has caught every single game for the Oakland Athletics. There's a drive to left center field. It's down a base hit. That'll score the run. Davis is in, and Suzuki has himself an RBI single. And uh, the issues continue for Don Trill, especially when he's pitching in traffic, yielding a 345 batting average, a little higher now when runners are on base. These numbers are updated since the start of 2009. Only Victor Martinez, Joe Maurer, and Brian McCann have knocked in more runs as a catcher. So that's pretty impressive. Here's Kuzminov. Kuzminov batting 260 with 24 RBIs, former San Diego Padre. 
One run on two hits early here for the Athletics. Tigers, of course, played the Athletics in that two game series in Oakland to start the road trip. They won two games there. Ball high. And it's 2 0. Oh. Only the second series that Oakland has lost at their home ballpark. Otherwise, they have been stellar out in Oakland, but they have struggled on the road for the most part this year, not winning many series for Bob Garen, their manager. And we documented that the last time you played in Oakland. They are dynamite in their home ballpark, but on the road, they are just 7 and 14. They don't pitch well on the road, they don't hit well on the road. Whereas at home, they are one of the better offensive teams and also one of your better pitching teams in the comfy confines of the Coliseum. Three balls, no strikes on Kuzminov. I'm not sure I'd call the Coliseum comfy, but I get your point. Well, comfy for me. <laughs> you know what I mean? Everybody to each his own. It's just so large and cavernous. 3 0. And there's ball four, and that is a walk for Willis. So, single double and a walk. This is usually not the case for Don Trail. Usually, Don Trail gets off to a better start. Usually, it's the second time through where he runs into a few issues, but first time through the batting order, he is yielding just a 200 average, but he's got some work to do here. Here's Adam Rosales, who is playing shortstop in this game. We saw him play second base in that series in Oakland. Mark Ellis was still on the DL, but Ellis is back these days, and they've got Rosales at short tonight. And Bob Guerin was talking about Rosales before the game and said that he has to somehow find a way to get him into the batting order. He's been one of their hotter hitters. He homered in the ball game last night, and as a matter of fact, uh, Bob Guerin asked him today when I was in his office, did he have a first baseman's glove, so he's going to get some reps over at first as well. If you hit, they will find a place for you to play. Meanwhile, Don Trell struggling with the control, and the natives are getting restless now. Here comes Rick Knapp, the pitching coach out. You'll recall that Willis, two starts ago, walked seven in a start against the Boston Red Sox. He limited Los Angeles to three walks in his last start, and now Gene Lamont is on the phone, and very quickly, Jim Leland will get somebody warming up in the Detroit bullpen. Uh, here's some of the numbers to validate the, the point that I was making about to Don Trail. First two innings, 193 batting average. ERA, excuse me, opponent's batting average, a lot less than that. And innings three plus, you know, the numbers are elevated. So no on Rosales. Meanwhile, Galarraga beginning to heat up. Rosales batting 282. He's hit 400 over his last 11 games. And he takes low, run it to 3 0. Two on for the A's. They have a run in, only one out. 3 0 pitch. Three and one on Rosales. Who made the team on the very last day of spring training this season. Jake Fox waiting on deck and a bluff. Back in easily at second base, Suzuki. Tigers come into play tonight at 25 and 21. Had the off day yesterday after that tough loss on Sunday against the Mariners. New ball four missing by a wide margin, and that's back to back walks for Willis. He's going to load him up. Now we'll see if uh, Don Trell can get one of those patented double plays that seemingly always gets him out of trouble. And he could really use one here with the run already in. Fox is hitting 203. Former Michigan Wolverine. Playing in left field here this evening. Way high, 1 0. Dontrell continues to miss in the exact same spot with all of his fastballs to these right handed hitters. Apparently, he must be lunging forward with his body, which is causing the arm to lag. 
Therefore, the fastballs are up and elevated and away from the right handers. Avila may want to uh, pick a couple of these situations where he sets up on the inner third of the plate, uh, which would kind of cause Dontrell to throw across his body and to see if he could find the plate that way. Fox has bounced into three or make it five double plays this year. Waves and misses. One and two. Guzman off the to eight. That leads the team. The pitch count now for Willis already at 20 here in the first inning. One and two. Bouncing ball hit to second base. He'll flip to second one. Here comes the relay. There's your double play. It goes four, six, three. Just in the nick of time for Dontrell Willis. Minimal damage. One nothing Oakland. Big boy. It features Austin Jackson at the top and Johnny Damon and Maglio Ordonez. Cabrera back in the lineup tonight. He'll clean up, followed by Brennan Bosch. Carlos Guillen is back in the lineup as well off the DL. In Javila and Everett, your bottom three. Bernstein Advantage brings you the scouting report on Ben Sheets. Get the Bernstein Advantage. We go to bat for you. Well, after missing the entire 2009 season, Sheets has finally found. His comfort zone, the last four starts for Oakland, 25 strikeouts in 29 innings. He was once the ace of the Milwaukee Brewers as well with a good fastball, outstanding breaking ball, and using a changeup much more, and he worked very quick on the mound. 6 one 2 22 out of Baton Rouge, Louisiana. He is 31 years old. That's in the air toward right field. Hit pretty well going to the corner, and it'll be run down there by Gabe Gross. Well, we know Gross is in right field for Bob Guerin's athletics. Let's take a look at the remainder of the defense. You've got Davis in center. Fox is in left. In the infield, you've got Ellis, who has spent a lot of time on the disabled list, but he comes in with an outstanding career fielding percentage. As a matter of fact, of guys that have played over 750 games in the big leagues, he is third all the time. So Ellis can really pick up the baseball from that second base position. Johnny Damon with one out. Damon was over his last eight, is hitting 276, but three for eight this year against Athletics pitching. Lights that one off, 0 2. I guess Damon has uh, recognized uh, something after days off. I really haven't uh, looked at his numbers that much, but he says he doesn't do a whole lot after a day off. He says they don't. He doesn't want any more days off. He says he just wants to play because he says he's playing very well. Then you get a day off, and then all of a sudden he starts to struggle just a little bit. Kuzminov handles the pop up for out number two. Sheets with a couple of quick outs here in the first inning. It'll bring up Ordonez. And Sheets missed all of 09, as we mentioned, with that elbow surgery. Signed as a free agent in January and was given a nice, hefty one year contract, which opened up some eyes around Major League Baseball because of the fact that he had not pitched in a year. But boy, when he was going good with Milwaukee, he was really good. He was basically signed out of a tryout camp. There were several general managers and scouting directors that went to Arizona to watch him throw a bullpen, and apparently 
And the Billy Beans staff liked him a whole lot because they were the ones that gave him a $10 million contract for just one year. Aglio, seven for his last 14, absolutely red hot. And in fact, had nine hits on the road trip, really bumped up his average on that road trip. 327 coming in. Hits that one back up the middle. Rosales diving. He's able to knock it down, and he has no play. It's an infield hit. Maglio has been the hottest hitter in the American League the last couple of weeks, and we're going to show you a little bit of what he was able to do on this past road trip. Not only was he hitting the balls in the gaps and getting singles the opposite way, but he was also playing long ball, which Maglio has done a little bit more frequently this year than in the last couple of years, especially early on. So... Maglio continues to get it done 450 on the trip in six games and one knock here at Comerica Park to start off this homestand. Cabrera on his first swing back drills one deep to right field way back and gone. After missing two games for the birth of his daughter Isabella he's hit one out for her and do not think for one moment this club does not miss Cabrera. They lost two games on the road trip when he was not there. And even though it looked like they should have won the game before getting home, he turns the lineup over. When he is getting four at-bats a game, he is moving the baseball all over the place. Sheets tries to sneak a first-pitch fastball by the big fella. And, of course, Cabrera does not let him do it. So once again, three and four coming through. The infield hit for Maglio and the bomb for Miguel Cabrera. 11 home runs this year, and the Tigers now lead 2-1. to one. Bosch takes a rip and fouls it back. The Athletics have now allowed 33 home runs on the road, which is the most in the American League. Cabrera touching up sheets for a long ball here. The hook missing high, and that one caught the home plate umpire, John Hirschbeck. And the numbers on Bosch, 343. Looking for his first hit against A's pitching, but when you total up the extra base hits, 17 of them now for Bosch. Bosch has got some leadership qualities as well. And not only is he a really good player, and he has demonstrated that uh, in just the one month that he has been in the major leagues, but young Danny Work, who was sit down to the minor leagues as we get a look at this last pitch off the right shoulder of Hirschbeck. Danny Worth was sitting there, and we were talking to Danny Worth, and Bosch was just continuing to console him and tell him how well a job that he did and continue to go down the minor leagues. And if you do that and you play well, you'll get right back up here. So he's got some nice leadership skills as well. His bat does a lot of talking as well. Bosch with 22 RBIs. Thanks that one off his foot. One ball and two strikes. The A's, by the way, have allowed the fewest home runs at home this year. And it gets back all the numbers we're talking about there. It's oh, so good at home, but on the road, they scuffle. I was asking Bob Guerin about that today, and he said, right, if I had the answer for that, obviously our numbers would be a whole lot better. Here's the one-two. Swing and a miss. Bosch goes down, and the inning is over. First strike out of the game for Sheets. But there goes Cabrera leaving the yard. A two-run shot.
Probably the best day we've had all year weather-wise here at the ballpark. 82 degrees at game time. Clear skies and a beautiful night for a Tigers win. Miguel Cabrera doing his part with a two-run shot to give Dontrell Willis his first lead of the game. And now the D-train back to work. Facing the bottom three in Bob Guerin's lineup. Mark Ellis leads it off and takes strike one. Ellis back from the disabled list. Got a hamstring problem. And he has been one of those A's that has been on the DL a lot in his career, five times. With a little bit more offense, Ellis would have a couple gold gloves in his back pockets. In two of the last four years, he has been the top fielding percentage wise, second baseman in the American League. Shattered his bat, loops one into shallow right field for a base hit. A few more of those would uh, greatly aid in him possibly winning a gold glove or two. Polanco won two of those four gold gloves that Ellis finished in the running for the last four years. Third hit of the game for the Athletics, first for Mark Ellis, who came into this game just one for his previous 16. So, broken bat or not, he'll take it. Here's Gabe Gross. Former Tampa Bay Ray. Not to mention a few other teams, Milwaukee and Toronto. There's a strike called on Gross. Dontrell has not been as good this year uh, at getting left-handers out. They're hitting him at a 250 clip, but overall, throughout his big league career, which started in Florida, left-handers are only hitting 207 against Dontrell, so he continues to Pitch pretty good baseball against left-handed hitting. One ball, one strike. Well, that run that he gave up in the first inning was his first against Oakland. And 11 innings of work against him in his career. 1-1. One, one. Hello, and outside. Two balls, one strike on Gabe Gross. How good of an athlete is Gabe Gross? Well, good enough to play quarterback as a freshman at Auburn University, which over the years has had a terrific football program, was a baseball player and a football player there, and started as a freshman. There's a strike call, two and two. First round pick of the Toronto Blue Jays back in 2001, 30 years old now, is Gross. Ball hit slowly toward the shortstop. Everett to Guillen Juan. Relay is a double play, and Carlos, wait a minute. They're calling the runner safe at first base or second base. Looks like Carlos turned that nicely, but hold everything. What is it, catcher's interference or something? Yep, catcher's interference. Well, that would have been huge. Oh, my goodness. That's tough. That would have been huge. Instead, everybody is safe. And Gross waits until the last moment. You can see the glove of Avila right up there. And he hits his glove. And you could tell by the reaction of Avila that he did make contact with his glove. So that's an error on the catcher. So instead of the second double play ball for Dontrell, now he's got a jam brewing here. And here comes Landon Powell, the number nine hitter. Take one more look at the glove here of Avila, and you can see that this ball, as soon as it gets there, the bat head right off the glove of the youngster Avila. Meanwhile, everybody is so concerned about how Guillen would turn a double play at second base. He looked pretty good on that one, although it wasn't a double play. Would have been had it not been for the interference. Carlos making his first start at second. Carlos is a pretty good athlete last couple of years he has had a few injuries there's no way of getting around that but uh, you don't play shortstop in the big leagues and make three all-star teams unless you're a pretty good athlete and he is that and uh, talking to Rafael Belliard he said that this is going to be the most difficult play for him is with the base runner coming in from first base he's not accustomed to that play but he quickly gets his right foot out of the way and eludes the tag of Ellis but that is going to be the most difficult play for Carlos Guillen to learn, especially when you've got a very aggressive runner at first base that's running down the second. That's when it will become tricky for Carlos Guillen. So one out with a strikeout of Powell. Here's Rajay Davis. 
Davis with a double to start the game. He eventually scored a run on the hit by Suzuki. Willis and Porcello lead the Tigers with eight double plays induced. A little chopper hits slowly down the third base line. Going to let it roll foul. It's a wise decision. And Rajai Davis running from the side of the batter's box that he runs from is one of the fastest base runners in the American League. That's how fast he is. Bob Guerin has seen Davis really start to swing a hot bat 364 over his last 11 games. Coco Crisp came back off the disabled list from a broken finger and then went right back on a couple of days later with a muscle strain. I think Bob Guerin lit a fuse up underneath Rajah Davis when we were out west the last week when he was pinch hitting for him late in games with. Bouncing ball hit to second base. Guillen will flip the second one. Here comes the relay. Not in time. Davis. Too much speed, and Dontrell almost got another double play. He's getting the ground balls. Carlos does everything you could possibly do here. He grabs the ball, and he shuffles it underhand. He gives it to Everett in enough time where Everett can make a decision as to how he wants to protect himself uh, with the base runner coming in. But Rajah Davis, as we pointed out, one of the fastest base runners from that side of the batter's box in the American League. He is tough double up. Here comes Derek Barton. Two outs with men at first and third. Barton had a sacrifice back in the first inning, advancing a runner. He is the only Oakland Athletic this year that has played in every game. One ball, one strike on Barton. Now, Trell lollipopping one over there to first base with Davis down there. Rajay 18 steals. He's been caught only twice, and he is tied for the American League lead with Juan Pierre in stolen bases. Missed it low, two and one. Rajay at 90 percent. Meanwhile, has caught 43%. He's done well this year. Bouncing ball to first, right at Cabrera, and that is going to get Willis out of the jam. Nicely done by Dontra. No runs, a hit, they strand two.
for Detroit. It'll be Guillen, then Inge and Avila facing Ben Sheets. And this will be Carlos' first at bat since going on the disabled list on April the 23rd. So a little over a month away from action for Guillen, but he's good to go tonight. Went down to Toledo and uh, had a rehab stint there, and by all indications was swinging the bat pretty good. Five games, one home run, drove in a couple, scored some runs. And with uh, players like Carlos, when they do go down to the minor leagues, the numbers really do not matter all that much. But what Jim Leland wants to find out is, is he healthy and is he running the bases injury free? Because he's a proven 300 hitter, at least in the Tigers for five years. Well, to illustrate that, he was hitting 311 before the injury hit, and he had a seven game hitting streak going before the injury. Sheets missed it inside, two and two. It's a good pitch by Sheets. He's got a fastball, he's got a curveball, and uh, now throwing a changeup a whole lot more than he did when he was uh, pitching for the Milwaukee Brewers, where he got his start to his big league career. It's in the shallow left, long run for Fox. He's not going to get there in foul ground. Speaking of Sheets in Milwaukee, this is how good he was over there. He was one of the premier pitchers uh, in Milwaukee in the senior circuit. He had a nasty, filthy curveball, which he still has. Fastball explosive at 94 to 96. Now we've talked about the fact that he throws a changeup, but he has incredible mound presence as well. This guy's not afraid. Made two starts against the Tigers as a member of the Brewers in interleague play. And Gave up six runs in 12 and two thirds in those two starts. It was touched up for the two run homer by Cabrera in the first inning tonight. Here's the 2 2 pitch, and Guillen steps out. He's given time by home plate umpire John Hirschbeck. Out the way. Sheets does not throw as hard as he used to before the shoulder surgery. He was anywhere from 94, 97, and 98. Uh, but with a shoulder, and sometimes the arm strength doesn't come back for a couple of years. He works pretty much around 91 to 93. Occasionally he'll get in the mid 90s. There's that last pitch, which is a changeup that he's throwing a whole lot more of these days, but you can still see that. It's a pitch that's still in progress for him. But his curveball is a really good pitch, as it always has been. Three two pitch. Fouled off. Well, he left the Milwaukee Brewers as their all time strikeout leader, over 1,200 strikeouts. And it seemed like. Every single night he was striking out eight, nine, ten batters. When CeCe Sabathia was traded over to the Milwaukee Brewers, he and Sheets were the premier one-two combo in all of baseball. They got it done. Of course, they went to the postseason that year, and that's when the injuries started to kind of pile up for Sheets after that postseason appearance in 2008. Well, Guillen's giving him a battle here. Count three and two. A lengthy at bat here to lead off the bottom of the second. And he missed low. Ball four. So Guillen's return is a 10 pitch walk. And there was a time when these two pitchers right here, Don Trail with Florida, of course, Ben Sheets with the Milwaukee Brewers were making all star teams and just doing a very nice job. Second in the National League with 264 strikeouts with Sheets in 04. And of course in 05, Don Trail finished second to Chris Carpenter at winning a Cy Young possibly that season. So a couple of real good pitchers when they were in the senior circuit. Here's Brandon Inge. Spins away from a pitch up and in. Sheets having trouble locating the strike zone now. He has walked Guillen. Inge batting 218. Homered in that series in Oakland. The 1 0. Ben Sheets is 31 years old. He'll be 32 in July. Made four All Star teams over in the National League. 
In fact, he started for the National League in 2008. Good pitch on the outer edge, 1 2. And when you're able to locate uh, your fastball in the outer third of the plate, as he located that last fastball in the mid 90s, it's going to be tough for him to catch up to. And so was that one. One gone, and that's going to bring up Alex Avila. Second strikeout for Sheets. We're talking about all the strikeouts he would pile up. In fact, back in 04, he set a Brewers record by striking out 264 batters in a season. And in one of those games, facing a pretty good Atlanta lineup, he struck out 18, which is still his career high. Avila batting a buck 59 with one on, one out. Now, Vila should get himself a pretty good fastball to hit right here, and if he does get one, you know, this is one of that those predictable counts where he should jump all over it. He shouldn't be late on a fastball here. One ball, one strike. 94 up at the letters, and he swings right through it. Three hits on the road trip for Avila. Uncle Charlie misses the outside. Two and one. That has been his signature pitch since coming to the major leagues. Down the left field line, slicing. It doesn't hurt you too bad when you've got a 95 mile per hour fastball to go with that good breaking ball, though. Told you that Sheets was signed basically after auditioning for about 15 to 20 major league clubs after missing the entire 2009 season. But it's not all that uncommon to find a pitcher or to sign a pitcher like Sheets after they've missed a year. But just by you watching them throw a bullpen, you kind of know what he's done in the past by the numbers that he has put up. We put up some of those very good numbers by Ben Sheets. That said, it's still a little bit of a roll of the dice when uh, somebody's coming off. An elbow surgery like that. To be perfectly honest with you, I think that what Billy Bean was looking at, Mario, and it's something that Billy Bean has done throughout his big league career. He will sign a guy like Sheets, hoping Sheets has a very good first half, and he will spin him off to a contender to get prospects. Here's Parton making a play, throwing to second one, and a double play. Wow. Nicely done by the A's infield. Started by Derek Barton. Our professional grade. Well, here's a reminder to vote for your Tigers McDonald's player of the game tonight using your cell phone. Text Tigers followed by a space in the player's uniform number to 37338.
That's FSDET. You'll see the final results post game during Tigers Live. Your chance to be part of the telecast tonight. Good to see a nice gathering here. As the Tigers return home for a, a spell before they hit the road again. A family reunion going on here tonight. That's great. Meanwhile, Dottrell Willis has a two to one lead to work with as we go to the third. And the first pitch is in there to Kurt Suzuki. Suzuki, then Kuzminoff, and then Rosales. RBI hit for Suzuki in the first inning now, 18 driven in this year. DHing tonight for Bob Guerin. Suzuki, a native of Hawaii, played his college ball in California at Cal State Fullerton, who through the years has had a very good program. The 1 1. Led Cal State Fullerton to a World Series title while he was catching on their campus. So this young man's been a winner. The 2 1 pitch. Three balls in one strike. Erie manager Phil Nevin won to Cal State Fullerton. Tigers double A skipper. A lot of good players that come out of there. Three and one on Suzuki. Inside, he lost it. Lead off walk here in the third. And for Dontrell, that is his third walk of the game. They'll set up their cleanup man now, Kevin Kuzminoff. Suzuki on base twice already in this game. Kuzminoff also walked. That was back in the first. Bouncing ball to third foul. Mike Gallego, former A's infield, gobbling that one up. Apparently still has those good hands. Running through the signs now for Kuzminoff. The 0 1. Way outside, it gets away from Avila into the backstop. It goes. A wild pitch. Dontrell says, My bad. Avila had no chance at that one. So it's been a roller coaster ride the first three innings here. And because of a big double play ball in the first, Willis got a couple of ground balls in the second. He pitched out of some major trouble. Willis went five and a third in his last start against the Dodgers on the road trip. Gave up four runs through 98 pitches before departing in that game. Bouncing ball hit to the shortstop. Everett has it. Kuzman off is out. One away. Suzuki holding at second base. That'll bring up Adam Rosales. He also walked in the first. Got a couple of players in this lineup for Oakland that played their college ball right here in Michigan. Rosales played at Western Michigan, a former Bronco, and of course their left fielder tonight, Jake Fox, played at the University of Michigan for Rich Malone. It's fouled away, 0 and 1. Swinging a pretty good bat. That's why he's playing shortstop today. Pennington, their everyday shortstop, is uh, struggling a little bit right now. So, you know, Bob Guerin finding some opportunities for Rosales. Another ground ball. Guillen gobbles this one up, and they just got it by half a step. Two gone. Time for a game break now. We go back to the studio. Ryan Field has some news on the Yanks and Indians, Ryan. All right, Ryan, thank you. Here in the third, it's still 2-1 Detroit with two outs. Here's Jake Fox. And another ground ball. This one gets past the engine to left field. 
That'll score a run. Suzuki is in, and Fox has his 11th RBI. The second baseman, Mark Ellis. Two out knock for the Athletics to tie the game at two. Tigers had a decision to make in spring training when Don Trill had a really good spring, and it became very apparent that they had three guys for two spots. The other two were Bonderman and also Nate Robertson, but it was Jim Leland that kind of felt like Don Trill was the guy for that number five spot, and he also felt like they probably needed to trade the Robertson to the Florida Marlins because he would not have been happy pitching in their bullpen. Bonderman had a very good spring, as did Don Trill, and now we see what the results of what Jim Leland wanted. He wanted to give Don Trill another opportunity to pitch in the major leagues. Well, and you could make the argument that through his first five starts of this season, he was as consistent as any Tigers starter there was today. He pitched well. I mean, he pitched his way onto the team in spring training. And uh, Jim said it wasn't so much the, the, the stuff that he was featuring, but it was the look in his eye. And it just Jim just kind of felt like he had kind of turned the corner, and he would help this team win some games. One and two on Mark Ellis. But it had to be somewhat of a tough decision to trade away a guy like Robertson, who was having a good spring, too. And you kind of knew what Robertson would give you for the most part. Foul away. Ellis with a base hit back in the second. He had an 0 for 14 going until he singled yesterday. Trying to pick up Fox down there at first base and move him up, keep this inning going. Two and two. Back the Athletics now about hit the Tigers four to two. Athletics had a really nice come from behind win yesterday in Baltimore, trailing by about three runs late. He scored a ton of runs to win that game. Line to right field. That's a fair ball. Fox hits the bag at second. He's coming to third. And Maglio's throw comes into second base. And it's a single for Mark Ellis, his second hit today. Ellis hitting only 160 with two strikes. Gets himself a fastball away and does not try to do a whole lot with it. Simply goes with the pitch and when you do that you get rewarded every now and then and Fox able to scoot all the way over to third. So more trouble here. Here's Gabe Gross who reached on catcher's interference. It was back in the second inning. Five hits now for Oakland. Gross takes strike one. Take a look how deep he stands in the batter's box. You can see that line that should be about right there is basically gone, and it looks like Gross is as deep in that batter's box as you possibly could be. So if you're a Vila, make sure you get your glove out of the way so that he does not make contact with your glove again. After the first inning, guys cheat as much as they can in that batter's box once that line uh, is gone. Just 105 against left-handed pitching. For Gabe Rose. Well, this should bode well for Detroit. One and two on Gross. The inning was kept going. Fox singled in a run. He's at third base now. Ellis is down at first. <laughs> Swing and a miss. And Dottrell strikes him out to end the inning. His second strikeout of the game. But the A's get a run. They tie it up.
Well, Michael Young and the Texas Rangers take on Joe Mao and the Minnesota Twins. Some parts of our viewing area may see Cardinals take on the Cubs for Fox Saturday Baseball begins tomorrow at 4 p.m. on your local Fox station. Ben Sheets back to the hill as we head to the bottom of the third in this one. Adam Everett leads it off by chopping one to second base. Ellis will throw him out and one gone. We'll bring up the top of the order, Austin Jackson. Jackson 0 for 1 with a fly ball to right field. Both starting pitchers tonight have gotten a double play ball turned behind them. Willis got one with the bases loaded in the first, and Sheets got one in the second. Second base, another opportunity for the sure handed Mark Ellis. Two up, two away. And don't forget to have your picnic or party at an upcoming Tigers game. Group tickets, picnics, and party suites are on sale right now. Groups of 15 or more get discounted tickets to select games while supplies last. Order your group tickets. Here's the phone number 313 471 Ball or visit tigers.com, whichever you prefer. Johnny Damon showing butts takes a ball low 1 and 0. Damon 0 for 1 with a pop up. Sheets working quickly the 1 1. On the ground foul first base side a diving try there by Barton. Oh that was close and Damon thought he had himself a double. He was kind of staring out there saying, are you sure, James Hoy? He was right on it. Has scored 33 runs this year, which puts him top 10 in the American League, ninth to be exact. So he's on pace again to get to that 100 plateau. And with the guys batting behind him, you would have to believe, since Jim Leland runs him out there every day, whether it's in the outfield or DH, that they have a pretty good shot of getting there when you got Ordonez and Cabrera and Bosch and Guillen behind him. Up into left field, picking up a little bit of steam, but Fox is under it, and a 1 2 3 inning for Ben Sheets. Three in the books. Powell Davis Barton coming up. Trivia question this evening. Here it is. The question is 
How many former Tigers are in the Polish American Sports Hall of Fame? A, 2, B, 4. Was it C, 8, or D, 21? Not really that, but you got to name them and spell their last names as well. Ooh, that's going to be tough. Good luck with that. All right, we'll just, we'll just A, B, C, or D. That's all you want. There is a ball down low to Landon Powell, who leads it off. Powell, Davis, and Parton. Might be hard to say something like this. Spelling them totally out of the question. Powell takes outside, 2 0. Pre-game festivities included performances by 13 local dance troops here tonight in what has become a great tradition here at Comerica Park, Polish American Night. In fact, it's the 40th annual. 2 2 game, we're in the fourth. Powell. He's 0 for 1. He struck out against Willis back in the second. Waving a miss. 2 and 2. Down trail tonight, giving up RBI singles to Suzuki and Fox. And that has been it. Tigers got two in the first inning, thanks to a two run shot by Miguel Cabrera. Here's the 2 2 pitch. Full count now, 3 2 on Landon Powell. Rajay Davis on deck. Driven deep in the air to left. This ball is up. Bosch looks and it is gone into the bullpen in left field. A home run for Landon Powell, his first of the season. And the A's have taken the lead. Take a look at Don Trail here. You can see that that's a two seam fastball by the way that it's located on his hand there, and he throws the ball toward home played in how on a 3 2 pitch. Doesn't miss it. Fourth RBI. Davis in the air to right. Maglio is there. First out of the inning. And Rajat knows that he cannot make any money in the air. If he's going to continue to lead off and continue to steal bases, he has to make sure that he stays on top of the baseball and utilizes his legs, which he has done the last few games. They played in Baltimore. Derek Barton with one out. 0 for 1 with a sacrifice bunt. He's back in the first inning, and he now has eight sacrifices this year. He has walked quite a bit. He has sacrificed quite a bit. The 0 1. Martin used to be in the Cardinals organization. In fact, was a first round pick of the St. Louis Cardinals back in the early 2000s, 03 to be exact. And then came over in a deal that involved Mark Mulder. Gets back to the point you were talking about a little bit earlier about maybe spinning sheets off if he had a good first half because they have really run through some pretty good pitching here in Oakland and dealt away a lot of it. Yes, they have. And uh, that's one of the things that Billy Bean has done a lot of. He will sign a free agent in the offseason, hoping that free agent will play well. And then, of course, there's going to be teams that are in contention uh, at the all star break, at the trade deadline, that you may be able to spin off that particular player too. And get you a couple of really nice prospects in return. That's what they've done, and the majority of the players on their field have come from different organizations. In fact, Barton came over with Dan Heron in that Mulder deal, and then Heron was later comes. So it's just a uh, continuous cycle. Small market, I guess, I'm trying to utilize all the resources that you do have. Are they ever going to get a ballpark up there anyway? That's a good question. They could really use a baseball only park up there. Just take the music to the new park. Just take the sound system with it. Just leave the volume though. The 2 2 <laughs> is a check swing strike. He went around and Barton says, How about an appeal? They can leave everything else behind, but do you bring the sounds with you? Well, this game tonight is available in crystal clear high definition on Fox Sports Detroit HD. It is sponsored by Comcast. 
That home run given up by Dontrell Lewis is his first allowed in 30 innings. So 144 batters. Before we got a home run against the Detroit. There's Suzuki. What Suzuki just up? He's up again for the third time here in the first four innings. Athletics have six hits. Brandon Inge with a routine play. Shoots him down, and that is that for Oakland. But they take the lead on the Landon Powell home run, his first of the year. Donez leads it off against Ben Sheets. Glad to have you with us tonight. Mario and Pemba, Rod Allen, Mark Isofano, our producer. Brian Moss is our director tonight. On a gorgeous, stunning night for baseball here in the Baltimore City. We've been waiting for some warm weather at home, and uh, I guess it was warm here when we were on the road trip, and it's warm right now. Well, the fans love it. They have filled this place to the rafters here tonight. America Park looks awfully special when it's full. There is no debate about that. Meanwhile, Sheets has picked up another strikeout. The crowd on hand here tonight. This is one of the prettiest baseball parks in America. One of the prettiest. Here's Cabrera who hit a two run shot in the first inning. Drill deep to left field. It is up. It is back. It is gone. Oh, my goodness. A rocket out to left field right down the line, and Cabrera has a two-homer game. Oh, my goodness. The d -train, he appreciates it. That is home from Florida. Wow. Special. Special. Cabrera gets a fastball inside and pulls his hands inside and keeps the ball fair. Most guys are hooking that ball foul, but this guy's got tremendous bat speed through the zone. Miguel Cabrera with a home run, safe at home, safe and secure in New York life. Boy, Caddy coming back after a two-game hiatus, and he has hit a couple of homers. Bosch rolling one to Ellis. 
Two gone. Let's take a look at the hands here of Cabrera on the inner third of the plate. This ball is going to leak inside, but the last moment he recognized it right now. He's got to pull his elbow up, pull the bat knob through the strike zone, and that gets the bat head through at an angle which allows him to keep that ball fair. That ball was a shade off the plate inside. He kept it fair. Not only did he keep it fair, he knew it was gone. And he heard that sound again. He knows that special sound. Boy, did I miss him. Homer's number 11 and 12 for Miguel Cabrera. 3-3 game. Skien fouls one away. Carlos should have 13. He had one washed away. Game that was suspended in Cleveland a couple of weeks ago, but a, a few guys had some numbers that were washed away. Some like the fact that their numbers got washed away, and then there were some that wish they could have kept their numbers. Two and one on Guillen, who walked in the second. It's the second two homer game of the year for Cabrera, May 5th at Minnesota. They turned the trick as well. And it was the 16th career multi homer game for the big fella. Not bad for a guy that was 3 for 18 against Ben Sheets coming in. Sheets got good stuff. And Sheets had good stuff before the injury. He was one of the better right handers in the National League. Carlos has never had a three homer game, or uh, Cabrera rather, has never had a three homer game. Maybe tonight we'll see. Three-two pitch is popped up, shallow left field. Fox coming in, and that is that for Detroit. But they're able to tie it up for the second time tonight. Cabrera hit one deep. It's gone. It's three-three. Back here at Comerica Park, where it's been a great return for Miguel Cabrera, who missed two games. His daughter Isabella born just a couple of days ago. Cabby is back, and with a bang, two of the three Tigers hits off the bat of Cabrera, and both of them have left the building. No doubt the Tigers miss the thump that Cabrera provides in the middle of that batting order the last couple of days when they played in Seattle without him. Kevin Kuzminoff leads it off. He is irreplaceable. Usman off and Rosales and Fox. Bouncing ball left side on the backhand Everett. One gone. Hey, it's time for Radio Shacks. What do you know? The Athletics Club was founded in 1901 in Philadelphia, moved to Kansas City in 1955, and finally to Oakland in 1968. What do you know? What do you know? 
Here's Rosales. He's 0 for 1 with a walk. And he lines one to right field straight at Ordonez. Two quick outs. He's going to bring up Jake Fox. 3 3 ball game. Each team getting a run in the fourth inning. Willis looking for a snappy fifth. Fox, meanwhile, taking his time, gives Sheets a little bit of a breather after two quick outs. Now he'll take his time settling into the batter's box. Might even take a pitch or two. Ball one. Singled in a run back in the third. And that was his 11th RBI. A 1 0. Ground ball left side and off the glove of Adam Everett in the left field. Base hit. Everett with a diving attempt could not get there. The inning is still alive with the seventh <laughs> athletics hit. Here's Mark Ellis. Good night so far tonight for Ellis. Two singles. Ball high. Tigers tonight have been out hit seven to three. Looks like Don Trell is sporting a Duquesne shirt. And apparently he uh, hooked up with one of his former teammates, Josh Wilson of the Seattle Mariners. Josh's dad, Mike, is the head coach at Duquesne. And we were just in Seattle, so the two buddies must have hooked up. They were teammates in the Florida system. And they both came up. Cabrera was with them as well at that time. We've seen Cabrera walk around with the Duquesne baseball shirt and uh, Dottrell sporting one tonight. Under his old English D. The 1 1 pitch is a ball inside, 2 and 1. The 2 1 pitch is outside, three balls, and one strike on Ellis. Gabe Gross waiting his turn on deck. Hit hard to left field. Another base hit. So a pair of two out singles for the Athletics. D train is getting the Athletics to pound the ball on the ground, but they're finding some holes with these base hits. Eight hits for the Athletics. Here's Gabe Gross. He's 0 for 1, reaching on catcher's interference. Back in the second, a, an error is charged for the catcher on a play like that. And uh, no at bat for Gross. The ball's in one strike. And it looks like Gene Lamont's back on the telly again. Making contact with that bullpen out in left field. They were. In contact back in the first inning when Galarraga was throwing. That's when Dontrell uh, had given up single, a double, two walks, but he got a huge double play ball to close out that frame. And Armando has gotten off the bench again. Galarraga is scheduled to start the game on Sunday here against the Athletics. The 0 1. 0 2 on Gross. They might have tied him up with a fastball that kind of crept inside that was elevated at 90 miles an hour that Gross couldn't get to. Gross had struggled this year against left handers. 
Dontrell in his career. Good against left handers. Make a pitch. That ball is right down the middle. Pitch number 91 for Willis. Threw a lot of them in that first inning in which he walked two. Down trail tonight has walked a total of three. Three three game in the fifth. Gross trying to come through here with a two out hit. Fox at second base and they have Ellis at first. Fouled away. Raga now has been joined by lefty Brad Thomas. Bonine in the background with remnants of his mohawk. Some of those are starting to grow out now, and some have, have been shaved. But Bonine is not giving his up. Not a bad thing for him to grow out. The 0 2. Good pitch. Got him looking. And down goes Gross. So they lead two, four strikeouts for Don Trell. Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit. Presented by Bell Tire. Fifth inning, and the Tigers have been out hit eight to three in this game. That hasn't mattered though, because the Tigers had a couple of homers from Miguel Cabrera and Dontrell Willis has found his way to spread some base runners in this game. As Inge leads it off against Ben Sheets right at the knees for strike one, and then to be followed by Avila and then Everett. Seven, eight, nine. Jim Leland's lineup tonight. That sails outside. One, one. Ben Sheets first gained notoriety back in 2000 when he pitched uh, Team USA. In bangs a single to right field. Leadoff man is on. Hey fans, be at Comerica Park this Sunday when the Tigers battle the Oakland A's at 105. All kids 14 and under receive a baseball bingo card and have a chance to win prizes, including autographed Tigers items. For tickets, call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com. Baseball bingo. There's Alex Sevilla who hit into a double play back in the second. Sheets would like another one of those. Believe it or not, that is Brandon Andrews' first base hit to right field this year. His first base hit to right field this year for Brandon. 22 to left. Of course, he's gone up the middle, but only one in the right. And we're seven weeks in. 
One and one on Alex. And the advantages of going the opposite way a little bit more often would greatly increase Inge's batting average. Not necessarily power numbers, but he would be on base a little bit more frequently, which would give other guys an opportunity to drive him in. Tap slowly back to the mound. Sheets has only one play and flicks it first. That's as good as a sacrifice bunt. Move Inge to second base. It's going to bring up the number nine hitter, Adam Evans. That's what had a big knock yesterday with two outs in Seattle. Were we in Seattle yesterday? They just run together two days, two days ago. Which was good to see for him because uh, he has struggled this year offensively. His batting average is at 200 as we speak. Not a knock on ever. 343 is 343, but usually guys that are table setter kind of guys, guys that don't hit for a lot of power, guys that choke up, guys that just put the ball in play as Adam tries to do most of the time, they usually do better against guys like Sheets than your big power hitters. Davis lines this one up. Inge will tag and he will come to third base, diving in head first. Two outs and Inge at third base. And he'll leave it up to Austin Jackson. A little, uh, a little while ago about Ben Sheets when he first gained notoriety. That was back in 2000 with Team USA and the Olympic team. And Sheets pitched Team USA over Cuba in the gold medal game. And that's when Sheets really started to take off. And of course, he's done terrific things in the major leagues. I think Tommy Lasorda was managing that team. He was. Yes, indeed. Ball outside. 1 0 on Austin Jackson. Tigers trying to break the tie here. 3 3 in the fifth. Austin is 0 for 2. Hit hard, but right at the second baseman, Ellis. On an easy hop, and that is that. So the Tigers get a man to third, fail to score him, though. We'll go to the sixth inning. The ballpark tonight that had a little bit of uh, something to do with our AT&T trivia question. Here it is. How many former Tigers are in the Polish American Sports Hall of Fame? And your answer is a total of eight. And there you have them right there. And a pretty good list. Dr. Willis back to work as we head to the sixth inning. Landon Powell is leading it off. Powell and then Davis and then Barton.
Powell hit a home run back in the fourth inning. Three separate frames in which the A's have gotten one run. One in the first, one in the third, one in the fourth. Last year, didn't see a whole lot of playing time. That's because he's backing up Kurt Suzuki, who played just about every day for the Athletics. So Landon sat the bench quite a bit. But when he did play, what did he produce? 30 RBIs in 40 games for the Athletics. That's some big time production. It's not easy to be a backup catcher, especially when you've got a guy like Suzuki that's playing every single day. So for him to put those kind of numbers up. It means he's got uh, some really nice concentration to come in and not only produce defensively but offensively. And he gets his walk. So the leadoff man is on. And let's go back to the studio now. Ryan Field has another game break. All right, Ryan, thank you. Here it is 3 3 as we claim the top of the sixth inning. A leadoff walk to Powell. The fourth walk issued by Willis. And now Rajay Davis takes a ball outside 1 0. Davis has been on base twice, double in fielder's choice. He has scored a run. In the outside corner, Davis not so sure. A little bit of a silent protest in the batter's box. 100 pitches already in this game for Dontrell. One and two. Four walks that Willis has allowed, just one of them came around to score. That was Suzuki, who let off the third with a base on balls. Line drive, base hit to right. That'll drop in in front of Ordonez. Powell will go to second base. And the Athletics have yet another hit. That'll put two men on, nobody out. Well, we know what Barton's going to be doing here. It's a ninth hit now for Oakland. Barton had a sacrifice in the first inning. Ground ball and a strikeout as other two advance. Inge expecting the bunt at third. Swinging away, he takes it outside, 1 0. And he may be bunting in this direction if he is up there bunting. Uh oh, not that one. This one. He's down in that direction. Cabrera's over here, not necessarily anticipating the bunt, but Barton with already eight sacrifice bunts this year. You heard me right. Eight. And he plays first base. Just to give you an idea, Daniel Murphy of the New York Mets. Had three sacrifice bunts last year as a first baseman, which led all of first basemen in all of baseball. So clearly, this year, and with Barton batting and sacrificing this much, it gives you an indication he must be struggling with the stick. One and two. Barton has tied Elvis Andrews of Texas in the sacrifice department, each with eight. JT Snow played 16 years in the major leagues and was a tremendous defender. And Barton's a good defender, too. In 16 years, JT Snow had a total of 24 sack bunts, 16 seasons. And the miss, two balls, two strikes. His dad was a pretty good football player, too. Jack Snow. You had him on your fantasy squad, didn't you? Jack Snow? Yeah. That was pre fantasy. 
Oh, was it? There's strike three. Five strikeouts now. Four down trail. That's a big one. And here comes Jim Lee. Nice job by Don Trail continuing to get the left-handers out, to which he's done very well in his big league career. So the D-Train will give up the baseball. It's a wall side windows pitching change. And he'll turn things over to the bullpen where Armando Galarraga is coming to trot in and take over. Still a 3-3 game in the sixth. No longer in the game. One out here in the sixth inning. As soon as this game ends, our coverage continues with Tigers Live. We'll hear from the manager, Jim Leland, and the players. Plus, we'll break down the game and show you all the highlights. Tigers Live from the Call Sam Studios immediately after the game here on Fox Sports Detroit. So Willis turning things over here to the bullpen, hoping they can do the job and strand a couple of runners. Now Trell goes five and a third, gives up three earned runs. He did walk four, but struck out five in this game. And Armando Galarraga now will take over out of the bullpen. Look, tune-up action here for Armando. And it's not odd that a guy will get an opportunity to get his tune-up reps while doing it during a game instead of in between starts where they usually throw on the side. Armando is scheduled to start here on Sunday against this same Open Athletics ball club. Suzuki has a single and a walk. Plus a run scored. Mondo misses low, 1-0 on Kurt Suzuki. He is probably their best all-around player, is Suzuki. 15 home runs last year and drove in 88 runs from that catching position. And Armando's 1-0. Tigers tonight have given up nine hits. Yet Oakland has scored only three runs so far. They have left a few men on base in this game. The Tigers aren't necessarily short in their bullpen, as you would see on most occasions when you have a starter that's uh, getting some work in the bullpen in any game. But Armando struggled with his slider the last time that he pitched, and what they wanted to do was get him in a game situation where he would be forced at game speed to see if he could find that same slider that he had in his very first start when he came back up from the minor leagues. He was much better in that out. Here's the one two. On the ground left side in fires the second one here comes the relay it is in time Cabrera holds on to the baseball does a tumble. And Guillen turns another double play. This one goes 5 4 3. Carlos equal to the task tonight.
Welcome back to the Coors Light Six Inning, and now it's time for the Coors Light Freeze Cam. Miguel Cabrera missed a couple of games while going home for the birth of his daughter Isabella, but boy, as he returned, and he has returned with a bang. He has played long ball once to right, once to left in this ball game against Ben Sheets. Coors Light Freeze Cam is always brought to you by your Frost Brew Coors Light. So we're still tied at three as we go to the bottom of the sixth. Jim Leland uh, having, having a little chat with Dontrell Willis, who, thanks to Galarraga, got the double plate and that inning. So not bad for Dontrell tonight. No doubt. And Sheets goes back to work facing Johnny Damon, Maglio Ordonez, and Miguel Cabrera. Meanwhile, Sheets has kind of held his own. You know, he's not the Ben Sheets that has the overpowering fastball as he did in the National League, but he's kind of learning how to pitch. And with the arsenal that he does have now, fastball anywhere from 89 to 92. He still has the real good curveball, but he's throwing more change up these days. And, but I guess uh, you don't have to throw 95, 96 to be effective if you're locating your pitches. And there you have it. Doesn't pitch at 95 as he used to, but he has touched it. He has gone as low as 77 with one of those slow breaking balls. Those readings are courtesy always of Tomcat. Bouncer to second base, and Damon is out. Ellis has got a lot of ground balls tonight. It's one away in the sixth inning. Kirk Young, who is the pitching coach here for the Open A's, and has been in that capacity for a long, long time, and a real good pitcher in the A's organization as well. Notice that Sheets' arm slot was too high earlier in the year, and he just was not effective with his fastball, so they dropped him down just ahead to the three quarter angle slot, and he's gotten more velocity on his fastball, more movement on his fastball, and the changeup is something he's been advised to throw as well. There's Kirk, who does a very nice job with open pitchers. Maglio is one for two. Sheets has given up just four hits. His only problem is two of those were home runs, and both off the bat of the guy on deck, Miguel Cabrera. Ooh, that hammer is nasty. Still nasty. Got him strike three, and Sheets starting to feel it now. That is his fourth strikeout. Here's some of the damage that Cabby has done. He played long ball the opposite way early against the fastball, and then he got himself another fastball in the fourth, and he went to left this time. It's what I talk about Cabrera from time to time when I say he does damage from foul line to foul line. There you have it. Roll this one to third base, and Kuzman off gobbles it up. And so Sheets gets himself a one, two, three inning. We are still knotted up as we go to the seventh.
10 All-Star Game in Anaheim. You can help send your favorite Tigers to this year's Midsummer Classic by voting up to 25 times at Tigers.com. Vote early, vote often, and vote today at Tigers.com. Here's the update on how voting is going. Still, no Tigers on there trying to get Cabrera and uh, the rest of the gang. Uh, to share a leading at first base, Longoria down at third, and the rest of the leaders on the infield and the outfield. Still plenty of time to vote, but you got to get out. Galarraga gets Kuzman off to hit it in the air deep to right field, right in front of the warning track. Ball must be carrying in that direction tonight because it didn't appear that Kuzman off hit that ball all that solidly, but it took Maglio all the way to the warning track. It's like a little wind blowing out to right field here tonight, judging by the flags on top of the scoreboard. Third sellout of the year here tonight. Better than 40,000 fans packing into the ballpark on an 82 degree night. Here's Rosales. He's 0 for 2 with the walk. A little bit low from Galarraga, who took over for the starter, Willis, and got a double play ball to end things in the sixth inning. Tigers tonight have been out hit 9 4 in this game. But it's a 3 3 tie. Another high fly ball. This one hit pretty good to right center field. A lot of room out there. Maglio to the warning track. A couple of track shots. Two gone. Well, time for the Kevin Woodstein's legendary performance on this day in 1995. The White Sox and Tigers combined for a major league record 12 home runs at Old Tiger Stadium. And that would make Miguel Cabrera proud. Chad Curtis hit a couple that night. Big Cecil hit two. And Gibby hit a pair. Tigers hit a total of. Seven in that game. Two outs now, and here is Jake Fox. Seemed like last time Fox was up, he had to uh, take his time getting into the batter's box because the first two outs were made so quickly. And he's got to take a strike. On top of that, that's the worst. First two guys make an out, then all of a sudden you're the third hitter. And you have to give away a strike. It's going to go the other way. Cabrera able to slaughter it. Galarraga unable to hang on to the throw or actually even touch it. The ball was sailing out a little bit. And Cabby had more time than I thought he thought he had. And really, what he should have done is got up to one knee after knocking it down. Galarraga was going to be there. Fox is not fast. And right now, he's got more time to get to that one knee to make a better throw, which would have led Galarraga to the bag and they get the out. There. Base hit. It's a three hit game now for Fox. So make that 10 hits, and uh, Fox will depart the scene. Get a pinch runner, that's Eric Patterson. A chance for Mark Ellis here as the inning continues. Ellis, they haven't gotten him out. Three hits, three of the ten. Well, usually you don't put a pinch runner in the game in this situation unless you're thinking about stealing. There's already two outs. And the one guy you've replaced has got three hits. Strike one on Ellis. Singled in the second, singled in the third, singled in the fifth inning. Galarraga does a pretty nice job of holding base runners close. His move is decent enough to keep you honest at first. And he takes very little time getting the ball out of his hand into the catcher's glove, which would give Avila plenty of time to throw. That's something else that he does very well. Even if you don't have a good move, just hold the ball while standing on the mound, and then that base runner gets a little antsy over there and doesn't get as good a jump as he normally would get. Todd Steverson, first base coach for Oakland, former Tiger. Todd Steverson. Here's the 0-1. One and two by Mark Ellis. Well, Ellis feeling a little bit better these days. He was 0 for 14 before picking up a base hit in last night's game. And Got three of them tonight. Off the 15 day DL on Saturday, had a hamstring problem.
And the 0-2 with the runner going. And Avila has to dig it out of the dirt. His throw is late. No chance there to get Patterson, who has stolen his third of the season. Now Patterson picked the right pitch to go on, and he was anticipating that this would be a breaking ball, but it looks like it's a fastball. Uh, at the bottom of the strike zone, which is a tough pitch for Avila to throw. Patterson gets a good jump and is able to steal the base. Usually you run on two strikes, two outs, because you're anticipating, especially from Galarraga, and that he may throw a breaking ball in that situation, which obviously helps the best base runner get a couple of extra steps because of the speed of the pitch. Ooh, that's going to get away from Avila. And Patterson will now move up to third base. Wild pitch. And all of a sudden, with two outs, nobody on, they get a runner to third. Stole the base in a wild pitch. It's going to cause a confab now between Avila and Galarraga. Two for 12 with runners in scoring position tonight for the Athletics. Kind of nothing new for them. That's just the way they play on the road. They're much better at home, but they struggle offensively when they get away from Oakland, California. Here's the 2 2. Bouncing ball to short. Everett on the backhand. And Galarraga gets out of the mini jam here in the seventh. No runs to hit. We'll go to the stretch. It'll be Bosch. The end of the inch coming up. Games that you just can't make. On StubHub, the official fan to fan ticket marketplace of the Detroit Tigers. Go to StubHub.com and choose your seats today. Well, here come the Tigers now at the bottom of the seventh, trying to snap a 3 3 tie. Eric Patterson stays in the game and he'll play left field. A spot vacated by Jake Fox. Meanwhile, the pitch count of Ben Sheets in terrific shape as he faces, faces Bosch, Guillen, and Inge here in the seventh. That was just the 81st pitch thrown by Sheets. Bosch is over two, strike out and ground out. Big looping swing, one and two. That breaking ball is wicked. When you're going 94 with your fastball and you're going all the way down to 87 you know, with that breaking ball, it's going to get a lot of hitters fooled and out in front. Oof, checked it and they will appeal. No, we held up, said Lance Diaz. Played up by our first back now pointing toward the open bench. They were arguing this call and it looked like he went around. I guess they're telling Hirschbeck he should have called it himself. He asked for help. It's close call though. 
really close, as a matter of fact. Think he went? Yeah, I, I do think he went, to be honest with you. Yeah, I do. 2 2 on Bosch. Big Brennan Bosch has done a lot of damage. Seventh inning or later. 435 batting average for the big fella. Late in games. Not afraid of pressure. Sheets brought his A game with him tonight, though. <laughs> Down he goes. It's the second time that Sheets has struck out Bosch, and that's five in the game now for Ben Sheets. This is our bell tire pitch by pitch, but take a look at the first two pitches. First pitch, fastball away. Then he's going to knock him off the plate with a fastball in. So now if you're Bosch, you're thinking about the fastball. And this is where Sheets gets busy. He just starts dropping hammer after hammer after hammer until he finally gets the strikeout. That's pitching. That is pitching. So here's Guillen Carlos in his first game back. Walk and a fly ball. Mentioning a little bit earlier that before the injury, he had a seven game hitting streak going, so technically it's still alive as he flares one to left field. Patterson won't get there. Fair ball. It's into the seats and a ground rule double. That's why Carlos is back in the lineup. And Jim has said that he's not going to provide the same type of defense that Danny Worth was providing. Worth, who was sent down to the minor leagues, is a stellar defender, but what Carlos does is he hits you 300 from both sides of the dish and he hits good pitchers. As well, and they're hoping that he can stay healthy enough playing that new position to really help the bottom of that batting order. No doubt he will help that batting order as long as he stays on the field. And he hadn't looked all that shabby today playing second base for the first time in a long time. Well, that turn at double play or the turn at second base, which is supposed to be the one thing we would look at, has been. Pretty smooth tonight. I, mean, I know he went down to Toledo and played a little bit of second base there, but this is a guy that didn't play second base since his Seattle days in the big leagues. I was asking uh, Ramon Santiago before the game what would be the toughest transitions for Carlos uh, at second base because Santiago's a shortstop by trade as well. He said by far the biggest transition is knowing who the base runners are, knowing who aggressively likes to break up slides. Also knowing which way they do slide so it can help you use the bag to your advantage. Santiago said that is big. You got to know who the aggressive base runners are because that will give you an idea of how quickly you need to get to the bag and get the ball back to first base as a second baseman. Check swing up high. Well, having played shortstop for so many years, I'm sure he has an idea of who the aggressive base runners are regardless of whether they're playing second or short. Something else is going to help Carlos is he throws from lots of different arm angles and sometimes you need that athleticism at second base. And when guys are barreling down on you you want to drop down to make them slide so I think he's going to be a smooth transition for him. He's got plenty of arm strength and range still. Carlos tried to I don't know if you know this but when it became very apparent that Polanco wasn't coming back and they didn't offer him arbitration and we knew kind of the end of the year Polanco wasn't coming back. Carlos tried to get management to let him play second base but they said no we're going to give Sizemore a chance to play second. Sizemore got his opportunity but really couldn't get it going offensively and there are some that feel that his ankle had a lot to do with that and his defensive ability as well so he's back down in the minor leagues. Two and two on Brandon Inge, who has a single and two advance in this game. His base hit was hit to right field back in the fifth. This is only the Tigers' third at bat with a man in scoring position tonight. That's how sharp Sheets has been. And the two two. Swing and a miss. He finally dispatches of Inge and the strikeouts. Piling up now for Sheets, six. He's awfully tough when he can go to the breaking ball at the bottom of the strike zone, and then you start looking at the bottom of the strike zone, and then he comes up stairs with some easy gas in the low 90s. Well, maybe it wasn't so easy. I think it was 95 on being told that last fastball, so uh, he's doing a very nice job. Alex Sevilla coming up. This may be one of those situations where Jaron just kind of makes sure that Powell and Sheets 
knows the situation. There's a base open. You've got a left-hander in the batter's box. Although Avila hasn't performed up to his capabilities this year, you still have that open base. And if you do not get ahead of Avila, then you shouldn't give him anything good to hit with the number nine hitter standing in the on deck, sir. Well, feel free to join us again tomorrow. Game two in this series against the Athletics. Coverage begins at 6.30 with Tigers Live, followed by the game at 7. Tigers baseball presented by Bell Tire tomorrow evening on Fox Sports Detroit and Fox Sports Detroit HD. Avila looking for a huge two out knock here. Alex in the game is 0 for 2. Here's the 1 0. Two balls, no strikes on Alex Avila. And he rolls one to the right side of the infield. Right there is Derek Barton to tag the bag for the out. Side retired. Tigers get a double screen. And the Tigers baseball tonight on Fox Sports Detroit presented by Bell Tiger. His first action at second base uh, since 1999 when he was with the Seattle Mariners. And this is how he's done today. Uh, he's made all the plays. I mean, nice little shuffle here to begin a double play. And then take a look at the footwork here. He knows exactly where he's at. He knows how to get the ball. He's got one foot on the bag. And he's able to elude Ellis, who was sliding in rather aggressively. Then a nice shuffle and from one knee to ever to complete a double play as well. So, so far, so good today for Carlos Guillen playing second base. New pitcher coming on for the Tigers now. That would be left-hander Phil Cope, who is tied for third in the American League in uh, appearances. Well, Leland knows he has a, someone special in Cope, who as a rookie last year took the ball 70 times for the New York Yankees. And the numbers don't lie. 3-0. That bottom note opponent's batting average, 247 against Phillip. So in the eighth inning, it's going to be Gabe Gross to lead it off against the left-handed throwing Phil Cope. Willis gave way to Galarraga in the sixth, who now gives way to Cope here in the eighth. Throws a couple of strikeouts, reaching on catcher's interference back in the second. With three other teams in his big league career, Toronto, Milwaukee, and Tampa. The Blue Jays, the first team he ever played for in the big leagues. A little bit of power, some sporadic power. He's hit some homers in his career. 
the 0 1. Gross, however, came in batting just 105 against left handed pitching. Don Trell struck him out twice. Well, Ryan Perry beginning to warm up in the Detroit bullpen. Here's the 1 1. Line drive caught by the second baseman, Guillen. He hit it right down. Don't know what Jim will do as far as Perry is concerned, but it's nice to see the youngster up, especially after the very difficult loss that he took in Seattle a couple of days ago. Most managers, when they have a young player, and Perry would fall into that category, when they struggle, especially one of your bullpen guys, you want to get them out there as soon as you possibly can to get that bad taste out of their mouth. Ziegler, meanwhile, warming up in the other bullpen for Oakland. There's a strike called on Landon Powell. The uh, A's came into this one with only 27 home runs, the fewest in the American League, but they got one from Powell, their number nine hitter in this one tonight. That was off a guy Willis who hadn't given up a home run in a long, long time. Oakland appears to have one of those kind of clubs that if they're down by a couple of runs late in the game, they're not going to come back and beat you with home runs. They're going to come back and beat you with some singles and doubles as they did uh, yesterday when they came from behind to win their ball game in Baltimore. Here's the 1 1. Driven down the left field line. It's going to drop. Base hit. Bosch over to play it on two hops. And Powell. Has his second hit. So we'll go ahead, run as a boy. One of the things the A's have been able to do is win close games this year. They're eight and two in one run games, which is the best record not only in the American League, but in all of big league baseball. Pretty impressive. So they are able to, uh, late in games, apparently, scratch across some runs. And here is Rajay Davis, who has a single and a double. Davis two out of four. And he came in hot. He has continued that here tonight. They're not worried about uh, Powell going anywhere from first base. Powell is as big as Cabrera. Powell's a big boy. Yeah. And many guys go over first base. Look at him out of Rafael Belliard right now trying to tell Cabrera where he him to play. There's a strike. It'll be tough to double Davis, which is what Coke is trying to get him to do, to hit something on the ground. Davis has tremendous speed. And it appeared to be a double play ball earlier in this game, a Taylor made double play that Rajah Davis was able to beat out running from the right side of the batter's box. Lifted in the air. This will sail back toward the seats. And land out of play. Cabrera giving chase. And a happy fan among the sellout crowd here tonight. That young man will go home extremely happy. 40,210 packing the ballpark tonight for game one of the series. Played the carom. <laughs> Smile from ear to ear. Shallow center field. Jackson will get there. Austin Jackson covering some ground as Powell goes back to first. When that ball left Davis is bad, it looked like Davis was not going to get there. It looked like Davis was going to get another base hit. It, take a look at where Jackson is playing and look at the real estate that he's able to cover and make it look easy, too. He just glides in the outfield. I mean, glides. No one's a little random. It's just no. fun to watch. Two outs. Here comes Barton. For three tonight, he has a sacrifice. He has whiffed his last two times up. Like a one-handed 
swing. A one handed follow through. Eleven hits tonight for the Athletics. And five for the Tigers, yet we're tied at three here in the eighth. Barton has faced Pope just two times in his career. He's one for two against him. Check swing. One ball, one strike. One and two on Derek Barton. Tigers in their half of the eighth inning will have Everett, Jackson, and Damon do up. We'll see if Sheets answers the bell. Sheets has thrown over 100 pitches just twice this year. Here's the one two. Did he go? Ooh. No, it says Lance Diaz. It feels to throw that next the slider in that same location. I doubt very seriously that Barton will be able to hold up. He almost went too far that time. Driven to right field. Maglio back it up. It's over his head. It's a two base hit. And Derek Barton. Has put runners at second and third. It may have been the right pitch that they went with here. After the breaking ball that he barely held up on, they went back with a fastball. But you can see where Avila is. Avila is on the outside part of the plate, but look where the ball is. The ball leaks right back over the heart of the plate, and that's probably the only pitch that Barton could get to right there. Mislocation there by Phil Cope. Bring Jim Leela down, and it's going to bring Ryan Perry in. And so, with Pope departing, we'll step aside. Still tied at three here in the eighth. Three in the eighth, Miguel Cabrera has come back to the Tigers lineup and has hit two home runs, his 16th career multi-homer game. Ben Sheets has looked awfully good tonight, striking out six. He has thrown 96 pitches in this game, and the A's have left 10 men on base in this game. Well, Ryan Perry is the new pitcher. Perry struggled his last time out uh, for really the very first time this year when he gave up four runs late to the Seattle Mariners. 
on five hits. And one of the things that I noticed about Perry in that outing that is when he threw the fastball up, he was able to get some outs and throw it by some of the Seattle Mariners hitters, but he got hurt down in the strike zone. They always teach you to throw the ball down, but when you've got velocity like Perry at 95 to 97, 98, sometimes it's better to go above the belt buckle with the fastball. You can get guys to swing and miss at those pitches, whereas if it's at the bottom of the strike zone, they just drop the bat head on those. Those are easier to get to. Well, Suzuki has knocked in a run in this game. He flares one out toward right field. Maglio is coming over, and that is that. So they get a double. Strand two. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank. Strength and stability since 1849. Wall side windows for a free and home estimate. Call 1-800-521-7800. And by Bell Tire, get the lowest tire price, period. Beautiful night here for baseball. We've had ourselves a good game, too, although the Tigers have been out hit 12 to 5 in this game. The Oakland Athletics have left 12 on base and they have a new pitcher now so the starter sheets is out and here's Brad Ziegler. Well it looks like they're catching Ziegler in the right spot on the road in eight games this year the earned run average approaching six uh, whereas while he's pitching at home under one. So Ramon Santiago will pinch hit for Adam Everett as we start things off here in the bottom of the eighth in search of a run or two or three. Jackson on deck little pop up. In the shallow left, but Patterson will get there, and Santiago is out. Ziegler retires the first man he faces. Bring up Austin Jackson, who is still sitting on one home run this year. He hit that home run back in Texas earlier this year. A long ball here would give the Tigers the lead. Instead, it's rolled foul. Third base side, 0 1. Jackson 0 for 3 in this one. Fly ball and a couple of ground outs. Everything that he's hit today has been to the right side of the baseball diamond. Flying out to right and then playing Pepper with the second baseman, Mark Ellis. His last two times up. 1 and 1 on Austin. 62 hits, fourth in the American League. Way inside. For about six and a half years in the minor league, Ziegler burst out of the big league level. In 08, 47 appearances, a 1 0 6 ERA for the Athletics. Big swing there, 2 and 2. He's got some movement, some depth with that two seam fastball that he throws from down under. 
as one of those breaking balls that kind of goes east to west in the strike zone. Not a whole lot of tilt to his breaking ball. Little squibber back up the middle. Ellis charging, surrounding, falling, and he is out. Not by half a step. Oh! Leave it up to Johnny Damon. Damon is 0 for 3. Johnny now is 0 for his last 11 as well. Trying to break that skid right here. in the Detroit bullpen, Joel Samaya and Fute Ni warming up. Driven down the right field line, fair ball. Damon looking for a double. Gross digs it up, has trouble with it, and it's going to be a two-base hit. So Johnny snaps the 0 for 11. And now the go-ahead run is on for Maglio. Damon's one of those guys that looks to go play long ball late in games, especially when he knows he's got a sinker baller on the mound. He'll take a pitch and try to elevate it. He didn't get that one up, but he hit a missile that ended up getting off the gate and was standing on second before Gross able to get it in. If you're Maglio, you know beyond a shadow of a doubt you're going to get something really good to hit. With Cabrera standing in that on-deck circle, base open or not, you are going to get good pitches to hit, which is why Maglio came into the game Hitting well over 300 and hitting 327 as we speak. He's got a nice protector behind him. Ground ball slowly hit toward third base. Kuzmanov has it. And that is all for Detroit. So they get the two out double. Scram the go ahead run, and we will go to the ninth. Night at Comerica Park. 3 3 is our game as we go to the ninth inning. Santiago will stay in this game and play shortstop. Got Ryan Field in the studio on a Friday night. Uh -oh. Crapping his style, young boy. That's not a good thing. <laughs> not a good thing. <laughs> Got post game, too. Ryan oh. going to hit the streets late tonight. All oh, the women in the Motor City are weeping right now. <laughs> Kuzminoff leads it off. Twelve men left on base tonight for the Athletics. Line to right field. Maglio had him played deeply, but he'll come in to make the play. That's one out. Terry came on in the eighth and got a fly ball, and now he gets another one here in the ninth. Ryan trying to bounce back from 
Sunday in which the Tigers gave up some runs late and lost that game. Dropping two to Seattle, which turned a uh, what was going to be a pretty good road trip into a sub 500 trip. Yeah, that was a bad inning, no doubt about that. Looked like the Tigers were in line to win that game. Here is Rosales. He's 0 for 3. Plus a walk. Pops that one up. Shallow right field. Ordonez coming in hard. Still coming. It's going to drop. He'll throw to second, and it is not in time. Safe with a blue double is Rosales. So again, Maglio playing deeply out there in right field could not recover. Well, apparently they're playing no doubles depth, which means you don't want anything hit over your head. But the problem with playing no doubles depth every now and then on a blue single, you don't get in to catch it. A couple more steps. Maglio may have had a chance to get there, but elected to play it off of one hop and a hustling Rosales, who was not hustling at first, was able to get to second. So with first base open, they're going to walk the pinch hitter Ryan Sweeney. He will not get a chance to bat. Mark Ellis waiting on deck. 13 hits for the Oakland Athletics. They have stranded 12 tonight. Boy, they had their chances. The Tigers have dodged a few bullets. And in fact, the Athletics tonight are two for 14 with men in scoring position. Ben Sheets was marvelous tonight for the A's. And there's ball four. The intentional walk puts runners at first and second. We'll bring up Sweeney. He already has three hits tonight. If you're Maglio on right field, you might want to come in a couple of steps. Ellis does have occasional power, but not usually to the opposite field. Oh, he's hit by the pitch. Ellis is drilled by Perry, and that's going to load him up. Well, that one hurt, but Ellis on base for the fourth time. Here comes the skipper. Made the signal. With Gabe Gross due up. Fute Knee will be summoned out of the bullpen. So another pitching change here at Comerica Park. We step aside at a 3 3 game. Player of the game brought to you by the McDonald's Deluxe Angus third pounder. No surprise there. Cabrera 79% of the vote with his two homers tonight. Inge and Maglio follow on that list. We'll have the uh, complete 
voting once uh, the game is done on Tigers Live, so stick around for that. New pitcher now is Fulton Dean. Lefties are batting just 200 against him. The big fella going to get him one of those Angus third pounders from McDonald's if he continues to lead the voting. So knee facing Gross with the bases full. And only one out. The infield's playing at a depth right now. If the ball's hit on the ground, Cabrera will come home. Inge will come home. These two guys up the middle, they will try to turn two if the ball's hit hard enough. But on the corners, both guys will be coming home to try to get the out there. The 0 1 pitch. Way high. One ball, one strike. Well, the rally started with a double by Rosales that blooped into right field. The intentional walk to the pinch hitter Sweeney. And then Ellis was drilled in the back by Brian Perry. That brought knee in. And so the bases are loaded. There's the 1 1. Slow breaking ball is tapped. Knee can't pick it up and a run will score. Scoring on the play is Rosales, and the Athletics have a 4 to 3 lead, and a ball that went about 40 feet. Well, if Knee could do it all over again, he'd make sure he at least gets one out. I don't know if he was entertaining the thought of picking this ball up and then trying to get the out at home play, but first and foremost, you've got to take your time, you've got to pick it up, and you've got to get the one out. Pick it up first. Is the first run in this game since the fourth inning. Here comes Leland again. And that's going to be it for Futaini. So we'll step aside. Another pitching change here, but the A's have the lead. Only one out. Fute knee is out of the game. He'll give way to the hard throwing right hander Joel Sumaya, who will try and wiggle out of his jam. Well, no doubt what Jim Leland wants here. He wants a strikeout. And that's why he has uh, summoned Joel Zamaya from that Tigers bullpen. Joel has 29 strikeouts in 26 and two thirds innings pitched this year. The 26 and two thirds and the 29 strikeouts lead all American League relievers. That's why I was lobbying for him to get to the All-Star game a couple of days ago. Well, couldn't argue with it. I know the setup man have a difficult time getting into the All-Star game because it always seems to be closers. But when you have overpowering numbers like his, who knows? Maybe he's got a shot. 95 percent of the fastballs that Joel Zamaya has thrown this year have been over 100 miles an hour. Fascinating.
Avila coming out of the crouch to pull that 102 mile an hour heater in. Add another one. And one of the things about Zamai, and some people like to say, well, okay, the gun at Comerica Park is a little hot. But he hits 100 miles an hour on everybody's gun all around baseball. He's no fluke. 1-0. One ball, one strike on Powell. You see Joel's first couple of fastballs have been up in the strike zone. Left-handers like the ball down. You kind of help a guy out like Powell if you throw a ball at the bottom of the strike zone because really the reaction time for him is shorter than balls up. When the ball's down, all you got to do is just drop the bat head in the strike zone and hope to get lucky against a 100-mile power piece of cheese. Fly ball, shallow right field, Maglio charging, runner tagging, catch is made. Here comes the throw to the plate, not in time. Throw back down to third, it's in time. And the run scores. Sweeney comes in. And Oakland gets a big, big run. So we'll go to the bottom of the ninth inning. Miguel Cabrera will lead it off. Tigers will need at least two. Cabrera, who played long ball not once but twice in this game against Ben Sheets, who continue to have everybody's number with the exception of Big Caddy. He played long ball to right his first time up, and then for good measure, he got a fastball that was running in, pulled his hands in nice. And I know Sheets is probably saying, How in the world did he keep that ball fair? But the big fella did. So it's going to be Cabrera to lead it off at the bottom of the ninth. Last call here for the Tigers. They are suddenly down by two after a game that was tied since the fourth. Has now been untied. Cabrera, Bosch, Guillen against the new pitcher, their closer, Andrew Bailey. He's good. He made an all-star team last year. Has nine saves this year. He's blown a couple, but the earned run average is real good, and the opponent's batting average against him is really low as well. Miguel Cabrera has faced him twice. He is 0 for 2 against him, career with a strikeout, but tonight he has two home runs in his back pocket. Bailey's got a power fastball anywhere from 95 to 97. He's got a really good slider, too. Works quick on the run. There's that slide piece. High drive, left field, way back. Does he have a three-homer game? He does! Cabrera, deep to left. And the Tigers are within one. Oh, my goodness. Two solo shots and a two-run homer. Bailey threw a couple of fastballs at 95 miles an hour, and Cabrera didn't even flinch at them. It's because he knew he was going to get this pitch. It's a little tumbler, and he absolutely killed it the first three-homer game of Miguel Cabrera's big league career. 
and they were all no doubt about us. Tigers last three homer game was in 05 on opening day when you might recall that Dimitri Young hit three against KC. That's how good Cabrera is and some of the players have told me as much. He will go to the plate. He will look for one pitch and the great ones. And it's going to be soon that we're going to put him in that category. They don't miss that pitch when they get it. Seventh hit of the game now for Detroit, and all of a sudden it's a one-run game. The crowd charged up a little bit. A sellout crowd here tonight. He took two fastballs right down the middle from Bailey and got the breaking ball and crushed it. Broken bat and a soft liner to Ellis for the out. Let's take a look at the pitch by pitch. Uh, Bailey comes out first pitch, 95. Next next pitch, 95. Cabrera knows he's going to get that breaking ball because he timed it perfectly. He knows he's not going to get three straight fastballs from Bailey. And he just absolutely crushes it. It's one thing to look for it. It's another thing to hit it. And another thing to hit it out. Time for a cool beverage after a three-homer night. He can have whatever he wants. Carlos Guillen now trying to get it started here with one out. Bailey touched up for the home run. Bringing the Tigers to within one run. And Bailey had not allowed a run in his last five outings. Cabrera. That's what the third closer he's taken deep this year. I know he got Soria earlier this year. And of course that's late in the game. Game on the line. He also got Brian Fuentes. Out in Los Angeles. And then he busts. Bailey here tonight. So. He beats up on closers too. Some of the best in the game. Ooh, what was that? Man, oh man. Goodness gracious. Baby's a little upset. That pitch was at 92 miles an hour. What is it? It's a cutter. Goodness gracious. Almost hit him in the belt. Did you see the movement on that pitch? Here's the one two. A little chopper hits slowly toward third. It's going to stay. No. It's going to roll five. I tried. Kuzminoff is a really solid defender in the down at third. We haven't talked a whole lot about him, but he only made three errors last year in the National League, which is a record. And he played in 141 games. Three errors. How close this thing is. Ugh. A couple of inches. Ugh. Bailey last year went to spring training as a non roster player and he started the season pitching in middle relief. Ziegler, who was a closer at the time last year, got off to a slow start. And there was Bailey, Johnny on the spot, and he parlayed that into rookie of the year. The one two is rolled foul. Two. The most saves ever by an American League rookie, Kazuhiro Sasaki of Seattle back in 2000. He saved 37 as a rookie. Pappled on 35, Koch 31. Sasaki had already played about seven, eight years in Japan before he got here. 2 2 pitch. He is rolled toward first base. Routine play there for Barton. And there are two gone. Yeah, it brings up the age old question do you count those guys as rookies? As a matter of fact, I think, did he, he didn't. I don't want to go, but I, I'm almost thinking that he did not get rookie of the year that year, Sasaki, or maybe he did because of the fact that he played so much in Japan. I know Hideki Matsui should have got the rookie of the year when he first came stateside, but he didn't get it. I'm not sure on Sasaki. Well, Bailey, meanwhile, with the rally caps out, one out away from closing this one down despite the home run. Here's Brandon in. You know he can go deep. Brandon is at five. So far this year, that last fastball at 97. Now the 1 0. That cutter or that fastball, goodness gracious, I don't know how anybody hits that thing. 
at that velocity to be moving that much. Cabrera upset him a little bit too. He is angry. Pretty wicked stuff. Pretty angry. That one just missed. Two and one. Bailey made the jump from double A to the big leagues last year and winning the rookie of the year award. And the two one. Now two and two. Brandon Inge. All of the Tigers scoring tonight off the bat of Miguel Cabrera, three homers. Popped him up. Broke his bat in the process. This should do it. Ellis at second calling, and the A's will take game one of the series. So despite the fireworks tonight from Miguel Cabrera, the Athletics, who stranded a ton of base runners tonight, will come away with the victory. Our final score, 5-4.